Hello, welcome back to the Spider's Web. And this is the second video in uh, the Balefy Catapult painting guide. Um, now, we've um, I've managed to cut down part of the first video, and it ended up being about 15 minutes long. So what I did was I added the first part of this vi of the video of the second video rather. Um, where we concentrated on painting the rope and the skulls. So with that happening in the first one, I'm not exactly certain how it's going to work out, whether this is going to be the last video or there's going to be one more. Um, but either way, um, we're going to paint this Balefire bit. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to paint this Balefire catapult. <laughs> okay, so in this video that is definite, we're going to be finishing off the uh, base coating uh, doing the metal areas um, and any other bits and pieces that we can find and then we'll get on to highlighting not sure whether that's going to be in this video um, or whether that's going to be in another video but uh, as I said in this one it's definitely going to be um, base coating of the metal areas there's going to be another wash over the um, metal and the bone areas um, but I see what happens here's a video two in painting the Balefire catapult I think that is all the rope and I know there's no more skulls on this so we'll go and treat that as though that colour is finished with <coughs> oops it folded over <coughs> next what I want is not quite going with the metal areas yet I want to make sure that the little bit of the wash that I put on has dried. Um, <coughs> oh dear. I'm going to go with Steel Legion Drab. <laughs> I actually mean Steel Legion Drab this time. I'm not just saying that because I can't remember what the colour is. Okay, and we're going to do this bit on the front here. This is looks like it's some form of leather. Okay, I'm going to go over it. In fact, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go over it all. Then give it a wash over with the Agrax Earth Shade again, and then um, pick out the detail a little bit later yep dropping everything again That isn't part of it. It goes up and over. It doesn't go underneath. Okay. So that is now that. I'll give my brush another wash and then we'll come back with the tin bits. I cannot remember exactly what the, the new colour of this paint is, but I have got a pot. I'm just not sure what it's called. So, I'm just going to go here, that's metal, that's metal,
this is going to be the one that takes the longest bit of time because there's an awful lot of metal on this <laughs> So then it's looking as though there's a little bit more metal on this side than the other side. I'm going to do that, uh, that stick metal as well because there's no detail in it so I'm assuming it's just like a metal rod there's no um, there's nothing to make it look like wood like um, de little designs on it for what you call it, um, like any of these grooves cut into it. And finally, oh, it's not finally, <laughs> there is a lot of metal on this side you think you've got it all and you just find more oh that should hopefully give us enough paint And you always see bits that you miss. I've said this time and time again. You will. You always see bits that you've missed. I 
and I think I've got everything now. <laughs> Apart from this bit here. And finally, I'm sorry I've not been talking, doing all the talking, I've been concentrating trying to look for the, the bits that are metal. It's not easy on this. Okay, I think that hopefully is everything. I thought I'd done that bit. Oh, I decided that, that was rope. Okay, so that's all the metal parts base coated. <coughs> now I just have to go and do that bit that I missed that I thought was metal, which isn't. <coughs> and then it's once again with the Agrax Earth Shade. Then I've just got paint on off my hands, I don't know how I keep doing that. <laughs> right. Actually, the reason I thought that was metal is because it's actually is now. Put the paints on it. I could see bolts. So, <laughs> we'll try again, shall we? And... There. Now we can go with our wash with the Agrax Earth Shade again. It really should really give it a couple of seconds to um, what's what I'm looking for? A couple of seconds to dry. So I'll move it over there and we can have a look at one of our lancers. I have actually finally got round to um, painting the base. As you can see, what I really should do is trim off the edge. Not that I really need to on this particular model because this one's the the one that's going to be facing the um, edge of the movement tray. On this one, would have been that edge I'd need to clear, and I still have to clear it anyway. So, let's do that while I'm here. As you can see, it's done. I've gone round with Rhinox hide around the edges, and then Steel Legion drab on the base, and then it's just a case now of dry brushing over with the. Um, screaming skull before putting some of the grasses on. Okay, so given that enough time to dry now, let's get over with our Agrax Earth Shade. And we'll just slap it on. The bit there below the um, skull is going to be. Um, a different colour. I'm not sure whether to do it. It's going to be one of the colours that I've used already. Um, 
in the main troop it's either going to be uh, blue, purple or red, I'm not sure exactly which as yet, I'll make the decision a little bit later which one I feel like doing but that's why I haven't painted that as yet Let's go with painting, covering everything we've just painted. Um, screaming skull, the uh, the tin bits, everything again gets covered with the Agrax Earth shade, except for the two shields on the front. I don't want them done with it yet. As you see now, I've done the shields. On the other skeletons, I'm going to do them exactly the same way on this. Um, Harlequin like colours, uh, Harlequin design in the blue, purple, red, and green. to do in back of the other that I missed the first time we'll give this another going over we'll give this leather cushion whatever it may be I know what it's for now I've realized what it's for it's um, to stop the bar breaking the the cross piece when it comes to a sudden jolt so that's what it's for I'm not sure what it's called but oh, well never mind I think it may have been better using a slightly darker colour for the rope than the um, Steel Legion drab. But I'll see what it's like when it dries. Most of the time you can only find out how it looks when it's dried. Um, I could always mix a bit of Steel Legion drab in with another colour as a highlight. Give it a couple of couple of washes on the Agrax Earth Shade, or even do a different colored wash completely. On the ropes, just to change the shade. Okay, so that I think is it for the time being. Okay so what we're going to be doing first of all is a little bit of Steel Legion Drab and this is going to be going as a highlight for the woody area so we'll get that on the palette First of all, we'll be using this again for highlighting a couple of other things as well, but at the moment it's for the wood. If I can get enough on the brush to come off. <laughs> there we are. we don't need to go everywhere with this it's just certain places just to break up the the color somewhat 
and you can see we're not going overboard with this you can go here and that like so we don't need to do the inside of it because so nobody's really going to see the internal side of this but we can make the top a little lighter and then for some reason this doesn't seem to have held a lot of the um, the wash that we put on so I'm going to apply a lot more to this side it's still looking grey and that's not what we want so I'm going to apply a lot more to this to make it look brownish I'm not a clue why it's not actually um, covered I always wash the models before I undercoat them, primer as I found out only since doing these videos that that's what you should do I never used to, never had a problem but now I have started washing them just to make sure that all the um, all the colour goes to where I want it to go to. Here we are. Oops. And there we have that uh, highlighted. Now let's go with the metal areas. And the metal areas are just going to be done with iron breaker. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Every time I'm looking for Rune Fang Steel, I find Iron Breaker. Now I'm looking for Iron Breaker, I find Rune Fang Steel. Here we go. So we have Iron Breaker. This is the one we're going to be using. For this next step. And it's just a case of gets a little bit on the brush. We'll put some on the palette, it'll be easier. Just get a little bit on the brush and just a little bit of a dab here and there just to bring out the detail of the rivets and the metal. And so some of these areas I'm not sure whether it is supposed to be metal or not but I'm doing them as metal. <laughs> okay so I'll just Get the pack there. Got a little bit on what should be the leather, but that's okay. It's not a big problem because we can always. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we can always disguise that when we come to highlight that area.
There we go. That's one bit almost done. I just do a little bit heavier on the top of there because I have forgotten to have missed that with the um, what you call it? The uh, oh dear, tin bits. So you can, you can always hide any mistakes like that. That's not a big problem. And we'll just dry brush here as well. Just to pick out the metallic details of this area, and I think that's that will do fine. <laughs> 